Hello everyone and welcome to Nerd to the Third Power, your one-stop shop for everything that's nerdy and awesome with a side of bacon. And for my vegetarian friends out there, tofu that's in the shape of bacon. Well, you're probably wondering why we have a little bit of a headline show going on. We had a schedule for something else. But, as a wise man once told me, there is a new constant in the universe. And that constant is, technology, no matter how advanced or sophisticated, will always fail. We had a failure like that this past week, so in preparation for that, we're just going to sit here and enjoy some headlines that we might have missed over the last month. Unfortunately, though, for my segment here, the Multiverse Headlines for Comic Books, I don't have a lot for everyone. You see, we're about a month away from San Diego Comic-Con, which means I'm probably not going to get anything newsworthy for the next two, three weeks or so. But you're saying you're a month away? Should you be getting some semblance of news? Well, I do have a few things, and this is from our friends over at Marvel. There's been two major announcements going on so far that we will obviously hear more of the closer we get to San Diego Comic-Con. The first of which is from our amazing Spider-Man. We were talking about earlier, I was talking about the Dead No More series that they were teasing. Well, it turns out the Dead No More wasn't the real title of the story that was going into it. The real title we found out is called The Clone Conspiracy. Now, if you listen closely, you'll hear a lot of people do amazing grunts and groans at that sound. Yes, the Clone Wars, well, not Clone Wars, that's a complete different grunts and groans from a complete different fandom. But Clones in the Spider-Man universe has, well, not really been good, has it? Now we have a brand new clone saga, I guess you want to call it, coming up, bringing back what looks like to be the Jackal. He's always something to deal with clones. It looks like a clone of Gwen Stacy, not Spider-Gwen, that's a different character. And possibly, if I were to gander and take a guess, we're going to get a clone of several other characters and family members from Peter Parker's life. We've already seen a few clones coming up here and there. So there you have it. That's a new series. That's all we really know for it so far. We don't know exactly what the Jackal's up to this time. We will know more as the story develops, obviously. Now, what's the second story from Marvel? Well, the second story from Marvel is what's going to happen after Civil War II. Yes, I realize Civil War II just started, but of course they have to tease what comes after it. Teasing come after it is going to be Marvel Now. No, I am not repeating a news headline I had a while ago. That's right. The next Marvel initiative is Marvel Now. Marvel Now, which happened several years, well, not several years ago, but it feels like several years, doesn't it? That's how fast time travels. But when they were starting all these new initiatives with Marvel, Marvel Now was one of the very first ones they did. So we've sort of come complete fertile, full circle, if you will. Marvel Now, our all new Marvel, all new, all different Marvel, and now, once again, Marvel Now. Uh, now, the now in the Marvel Now is all shattered. So it could be saying, like, oh, the universe has been shattered. Perhaps you have a more separated universe thanks to Civil War II. Hero versus hero might continue even past the actual main book. Don't know yet. This is obviously a big announcement that's going to be happening at San Diego Comic-Con. They will probably plan out or at least tease more of what may be going on. Like, is there going to be a new War Machine since Sad Face War Machine died? Spoiler alert, I realize that. Where is She-Hulk? What is she doing? Has she died? Is she in a coma? What's going on there? All this information we won't know until San Diego Comic-Con, hopefully... By the time it comes out, I'll be able to reiterate it with you guys and tell you else what we think. In the meantime, there is really not a lot going on or anywhere else. TV news, we are going to get a Superman on TV again. Supergirl, who's moved to the CW network, no, on, no longer on CBS, will be getting a Superman. Unfortunately, the actor uh, I do not recognize. I believe he's coming from a different series altogether. But uh, hopefully we do very well. This is the first time we've had a Superman on TV since, I believe, Smallville. In Smallville, it was pretty much super bored, that whole series. It didn't really become Superman until the very last episode and only a small glimpse. So there you have it. 
I, I wish I had more for everyone. I really do. So I'm going to turn things over to Kat now for some anime news. So Kat, what's going on in the anime world? Why, thank you. Business Wire posted a press release that Chinese company Shanghai Minghuan was planning a live-action adaptation of One Piece. They reportedly bought the copyright for One Piece for 1.6 billion yen, or about 15.1 million U.S. dollars, giving them the rights to create live-action films, TV series, and other derivative works. Included in the announcement was the news that the film would star Kubota Masataka, who played Light in the 2015 Death Note drama and recently polled as the number one actor fans most wanted to see as a live-action Luffy. Chinese idol Xie Lei Lei would play the female lead. Lei Lei of the GNZ48 group is known by fans as the girl from One Piece due to her resemblance to the character of Charlotte Pudding. Shueisha, the publisher of the One Piece manga, flat out denied the claims by the Chinese company and offered no further comment. The press release on Business Wire has since been taken down, and this, boys and girls, is why you check your sources. Shueisha and the other copyright holders of the One Piece franchise would never just outright sell the copyright to One Piece, especially to a Chinese company, especially for that little money, considering the worth of the franchise. It consists of, let's see, oh, 82 manga volumes, almost 750 episodes, uh, what, 13 films, a slew of art books and video games, card game. Heck, they've got a kabuki play now. They literally have it all. The merchandising alone is worth more than $15 million, I'm sure. Also, I'm not really sure why a Chinese-produced film would star a Japanese actor. I'm, I'm sure that's a thing that happens, but the two casting announcements sound like they just sort of picked the most popular fan theories and ran with it. So don't worry, the news is definitely fake, but I really can't imagine why anybody would make such an unbelievable claim. I don't know what was to gain from that, but it is done, it is over with, it is fake. I also can't imagine who would actually believe that. <laughs> Yahoo News. <coughs> Moving on, Digital Manga Inc. announced that Libre Publishing will end their publishing agreement at the end of the month. Libre's agreement with DMI granted them the rights for nearly 70 titles, some of which will now not be fully published here in the U.S. DMI president Hikaru Sasahara was stunned that Libre chose to end their agreement. We believe this is especially unfair to English reader fans since we know it will mean they will not be able to support the artists or publishers and may have to resort to scanlations. What effect this will have on the relatively niche Yaoi readership is unknown, but Viz Media's Sublime imprint is now the only publisher of Libra's vast library of titles. So what? Are they just going to throw more titles at Viz? Or just say, screw the American market altogether? I mean, is Yaoi too niche for a Japanese company to keep rolling with a relatively niche publisher? I'm sure DMI is understandably upset, but will fans really notice? I, well, I guess some will, and I'm sure the scan leaders will. It's sad to see anything that pulls content out of the market, but it's really hard to say right now how much of an effect Libra's decision will have. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Crunchyroll parent company Elation announced that it is launching VRV, which I am choosing to call Verb for the duration of this headline, a streaming service bundle that includes Crunchyroll, Cartoon Hangover, Rooster Teeth, CISO, Nerdist, and Geek and Sundry to start with. Verb will be free with ads and offer a premium paid subscription to remove said ads. Viewers will have the option to subscribe to individual channels or all of the channels at once at a discounted rate. While some of the channels and content will be Verve exclusive, Crunchyroll was careful to emphasize that their normal services and streaming content will not change. Verve will be available on iOS and Android devices, Xbox One, web browsers, and yet-to-be-revealed internet TV devices. The service is targeted at <clears throat> male millennials who are into anime, video games, and niche action sports. So basically you are, dear listeners. Verve is rumored to launch sometime later this year, but there's no confirmation. But they should be announcing a launch date sometime in the near future. Verve already has a website up, www.vrv.co, which currently has a promo video and sign up for early access. More information when we hear it. And finally, Japanese music and entertainment company Avex Group is coming to America. The astoundingly prolific company has established its first ever North American subsidiary company, Avex International Holding Corporation, based in Delaware. The company has its own subsidiary in California called Avex International Incorporated. 
The company in Delaware will handle the business of managing the California subsidiary, which will handle the actual entertainment business. This move is part of AVEX's growth strategy, which aims to, quote, build an organizational structure able to import and export content tailored to preferences and needs in each region by excavating and cultivating them through stronger cooperation among the group companies in Japan, the United States, and Asia with North America as the hub. So basically, a company that owns a good, I don't know, 60 or so music labels and distributes for even more for some of the biggest named artists in Japan, Taiwan, and Korea. You've got Girls' Generation, Big Bang, EXO, Kodakumi, um, Yumi Hamasaki, GACT. The list is really super long. And they're opening up shop in the U.S. to better their import and export business. I actually read over their entire business strategy because I thought this was really interesting. And some parts of the company's larger business strategy that I find pretty cool calls for them to push for music festivals and other live events overseas, to develop and acquire copyrights for anime content, discover and develop new talent in North America, accelerate the export of Japanese content like anime and manga, and basically create a paradise for creative people. Why this is really neat to me is because while many Japanese companies have expanded to the U.S. in the last few years to more effectively manage and release their content here, this is one of those rare instances in which a company is also looking to foster new talent from here and export it outside the U.S. AVEX has subsidiaries in Singapore and Taiwan. There's so much possibility for the company to move content. It could prove very interesting in the years to come. I'm crossing my fingers for an increase in live music events and concerts. God knows there are a lot of fans in the U.S. who need, nay, deserve a big K-pop or J-pop music festival. And that's all I've got going on in the anime and manga world. Over to you. Well, thank you. Uh, that's the only headlines we have going on for us so far. Uh, very, you know, comic book and anime. I think it's the last time we had our headlines was just comic book and anime. Hopefully everything, everything settles down here in this wonderful summertime. We get everyone back in here. Get yourself some good news going on. We have a lot of stuff coming up here on Nerd to the Third Power. A lot of big stories we're hopefully going to talk about later this year. So until next time, hope to see everyone here again. If there's a new story you want us to talk about, please follow us on our Facebook page. Like this page. Subscribe. Like this video. All that good stuff. And we'll try to get back to you as fast as we can. And hopefully see you here again next time. As always, Taka, play us out.